today, but the forests were thicker, wilder, more dangerous, and more mysterious. No, Annabelle did not worry about this. She was 11 years old. She fished along the riverbanks, played in the rust and rubble of an old brickyard, climbed the branches of a big tulip tree, and lived safe inside the home, surrounded by trees, with her cheerful and talkative family. Annabelle's mother had attention getting red hair and liked to talk about the good deeds she did for the neighbors. Annabelle's father liked to talk about how they pulled limestone from the local cliffs to make cement. Annabelle's sisters, Lucretia and Hortense, made ugly needlework things and liked to talk about the tiny dresses they sewed for their dolls. Annabelle's rabbit, Gideon, ate quietly and only talked to other rabbits. Annabelle rarely talked at all. Annabelle's silence concerned her family. They said things like, Do you think she finds this doll? Have we given her a stimulating enough environment? Do you remember when we dropped her as a baby? Remember when Lucretia hit her with a hammer? <laughs> well, but Annabelle was Annabelle and 11 years old. Uh, she did not want to talk about cement, and if she noticed their worry, she never said so. One morning at breakfast, Annabelle's father made an unusual announcement. <clears throat> My great aunt Leaf has slipped on an acorn in that crazy house of hers in the woods. It's unsafe for her to live alone anymore. She'll have to come live with us. Won't that be fun? Annabelle's mother said. And so Aunt Leaf came. By mid-morning, Annabelle's father had motored out deep into the countryside in his new automobile. By evening, Annabelle and her sisters heard the sound of the engine and ran out to the darkening road to wait for the returning car. Annabelle's father waved and stopped the motor. He opened the passenger side door. Slowly, slowly. Out came a gassy pile of blinking black rags. <sighs> what could anyone say? Aunt Lee could have been eight trillion years old. Her face was as wrinkled as, as the bark of an old log. Gnarled hands with long gray fingers stuck into the like twigs on a winter tree. She smelt like a swamp. <coughs> what could anyone say? Hello, Aunt Lee. Like to talk? Are you hungry? Do you like pots? Do you like dolls? Do you know any riddles? Do you want to have a rabbit? Do you want to go swimming? I want to go home. <laughs> Take me home. Take me home. All that June, Annabelle's mother tried her best to make mom be happy. She planned spontaneous family sing-alongs. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Have a merrily, 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 merrily picnic. Down the canoe for a picnic. Made exotic meals for Annabelle and her sisters to take up to her on decorative trays. But Aunt Leaf did not want any of it. What she wanted was to stay in her room, staring out the window at the branches of the birch tree as they knocked softly against the glass. Day by day, she grew thinner. Oh, she spoke at all it was to complain. This room is too hot! The house has too many doors! My skin is just a bruise. One morning, she just screamed. <coughs> Lucretia and Hortense stopped bringing up the trays. Only Annabelle continued to go. Every morning, up, up, up the stairs to Aunt Lee's room. And every evening, down, down again with the untouched trip. It was the same every day. Every, every day. day. Just the same every, every day. day. To one night, to one, one night, night, one night, night. Something, something different, different happened. happened. Till one night, something different happened. That night, long after the moon was up, long after the rest of the family had fallen into deep sleep, Annabelle lay awake, thinking her prayers. God bless. God he might now bless say, God, God bless you. 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 I'd like not to be chased by anything this summer. Annabelle. Bats? Or raccoons? Annabelle. Or a moose? Annabelle. Anything with teeth? Annabelle. And Annabelle, at last heard her calls, jumped up and ran to Aunt Lee's room. Aunt Lee met her at the door. Her twiggy fingers pinched Annabelle's wrists. Go! Quick! Quick! Outside! See if you see! See if you see! Go! Quick! Quick! Oh, so Annabelle ran down the hall past her mother. Down the stairs, around the landing, out the back door, and into the dark of the lawn in the woods. What did she see? What do you see? What do you see? And the 
nothing. Aunt Lee stared at Annabelle with her lamp-like eyes. I heard my husband. I heard your great uncle Greenlee whistling on the lawn. Did you hear? Your great uncle Greenlee was whistling on the lawn to his dog. Did you hear? No. He might be back. He'll be back. You'll see him next time if you move fast enough. No. You'll see him. I don't think so. You'll see his green shirt. Oh, You'll see the black dog. I've been to the cemetery. If you don't waste any time. I believe I've seen his grave. People come back. What? what? They can come back. That's not real. They do come back. That's only in stories. This is a story. Everything is a story. This isn't a story. Yes. Yes, it is. Spiders, rocks, pine cones. Living things are made of stories, filled with stories. How else would we know they're alive? Rocks aren't alive. Don't you know? When you sink your toes in the mud, you're sinking in stories. When you lie breathing in the dark, you're breathing stories. I heard my husband last night. I know. I heard him whistling on the lawn. Did you hear? Did you hear? No. And when you went out, you saw? Nothing. I didn't see anything. He might be back. Not me. If you move fast enough, you might see him. If you're quicker. I'll be quicker next time. Maybe you're going to lay in your bed, thinking and What can it hurt, she thought. Tell one little story, if it makes someone happy. What can it hurt to tell one tiny lie? I'm thinking of a word that starts with P and ends with M. Day after day. Pendulum. Mama. Paramecium. Annabelle Stanley talked and talked. Sixteen kids in one orb section. Record! Record! Man, record! And Annabelle barely spoke at all. But now sometimes, during the night, she would wake up. Annabelle! Annabelle! Run silently down the stairs. Ghost like of the back door to the inky lawn where she stood staring at the same grass, the same huge tulip tree, the same moonlight spreading over Gideon's hutch, she always did, and began to do something she had never done before. She began to make things up. The clouds were moving very fast. The sky looked a little pink. I heard a dog bark across the river three times, then three times. Then three times again. That's a sign. I saw the bushes move. The bushes move? I heard a twig snap. Go on. There was a soft jingling, a low whistling. What else? What else? I found a blueprint in the mud. I saw the trees bend and no wind. Yes, yes. I saw Gideon's fur stand on end. I saw a shadow. I saw a shadow. You saw a shadow move across the grass. Slide across the grass. You saw a shadow slide across the grass. Ripple across the grass in the moonlight. And something else. Something else? Smoke. You saw smoke? Curls of blue smoke from his pipe. Curls of blue smoke. Pipe tobacco. Curls of blue smoke. Drifting through the branches. And suddenly? A flash. Of gold. Of silver. In the leaves. By the tulip tree. Gold by the tulip tree. Silver. You saw a flash of silver. Like the blade of a sword. Like the blade of an axe. Like the blade of a swinging axe. His axe. And the sound of? The axe ringing. As it cut the dead branches. The sound of his axe ringing. Do you hear? Do you hear? Do you hear? Do you hear? Yes. Yes. Do you hear? Yes. It was him. I heard on the leaf. I saw his shadow. It was him. It was him. Bring me something from outside. Animal gathered leaves and branches and brought them inside. Damn. Gold rushes. Which hazel? Sycamore. Sycamore. Red oak. Red oak. White oak. Yeah, Black oak. Which mulberry? Elder. Watch the sky turn pink between the branches. Waiting. 
in case you see him. Now you'll know. Now alone at dusk on the riverbank, Annabelle whispered to Gideon. Every morning he would walk into the forest with his axe. Every night she would watch the sky turn pink between the branches, wait for his footsteps. In the dark, by herself, every night, Annabelle began to see. The more she saw, the more she wondered. The more she wondered, the more she imagined. Gideon, look! Look at the tulip tree. Don't the branches look like arms against the sky? The way the rainy yoga they look like arms? Sometimes I think I see eyes in the leaves. Really? See there? See there. See there. Do you think those were eyes? Look! 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 look. The more she imagined, the more she told. I saw a pair of tall boots disappear into the twilight. I saw a waggy tail in the back of a dog. It was huge. It was as big as a pony. All that July, Aunt Leaf grew fat and hopeful on the small fibs Annabelle fed her. Oh, wash my face. Hook my pearls. Open the window. The air smells sweet. Open the window. Listen to my story. Wait for his first whistle. Listen to my story. This is the story of Uncle Leaf in the summer the spiders came. This is the story of Uncle Leaf and the blizzard that covered the house. This is the story of all Uncle that August. Annabelle watched as the like fish jumped in the Uncle river. Leaf the way the screech owl sat on his branch in the dark. She looked for her Uncle Green's handsome eyes in the leaves and began to wish her own stories were true. Uncle Leaf knows every story ever told. Uncle Leaf, by September, Annabelle no longer waited for Aunt Leaf to call. Uncle Leaf left her bed on her own and spent hours on the edge of the woods, dreaming on her feet. Sometimes he is a man with brown boots. He built our house out in the woods. Sometimes he is a gray cloud. Every day he walked into the woods with his axe. Sometimes he's a black crow dropping feathers. He cut away the dead wood, made room for new growth. Sometimes he's a white deer. Every night I watch the sky turn pink between the branches. Sometimes he's a green snake. Wait for his footsteps. A brown mouse, a silver trout. I'm sitting on the steps looking into the forest. A yellow finch. A red fox. I lit the fire for supper. A purple moth. I'm wearing my new blue dress. Midnight after midnight, Annabelle sat, thinking and watching the dark tangle of the tulip tree. Voices from the daytime world called to her as if through the thickness of a dream. Annabelle! 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 Annabelle you wake up! Sleep. You're late for school! Get up! Wake up! We were signing our poems. Today is special. Our Halloween poems. Annabelle, we have new shoes. You look green. You look pasty. Annabelle, get up! It is rude to stare. Do you have a fever? Perhaps a large encyclopedia. Is there a bear out the window? Mrs. Howard's baby had the proof. An encyclopedia is a wonderful kingdom, all its own. I brought them some pickles and some jam. It was no trouble at all. It is a kingdom of facts. Do you know what we're discussing? A kingdom of relentless information. Have you read the chapter in combustion? I don't know what we would have done without you, she said. Of which we may be sovereigns. I don't know what we would have done. Miss Woods! It was no trouble at all. Who wouldn't be cheered? Miss Woods! Are you alright? Are you dead? Would you like some cocoa? Who wouldn't be fascinated? Are you ill? Miss Woods! Are you stupid? But Annabelle paid no attention. She was too busy listening to another voice. A new one. Her own. Cat Bullrush. Which case her? And in October came, Annabelle was wandering farther and farther into the woods. Staying out longer and longer. She did not feel the growing cold. She did not notice the passage of time. She forgot entirely the world of the day. She had fallen in love with the night. Darker, darker, further, further. Blue, black, and nothing. Bare feet, wet leaves, smoke and air, and soft twigs against my throat like fingers. Black, black, and nothing. Nothing. Black. Out of the 
the dark crows. Out of the dark crows. This. 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 This is a story. This is the story of this. This is the story of the dark. This is the story of the girl in the night. Oh, this is the story of the night dress and the wet lead. This is the story of the invisible head. This is the story of the whispering trees. The unheard sound. The yellow eyes. The deep river. Of the fish. Of the weeds. The moon. This is the story of all that November Annabelle moved, transfixed from bed to woods, from branches to stairs, bringing in a story from the night to share with all of you. But as the leaves turned yellow, fell one by one onto the gray earth, only herself spoke less and less. Oh, sometimes she spoke and made no sense at all. There's bats in the grass. Stop pinching me. Don't eat that egg. Poison. Poison. Sometimes she opened her mouth and only scattered words came out. Moss. Moss. Wallpaper work. Beetle maggot lump. Mossinger lump. Sometimes only sounds. But Annabelle didn't care. She came back from the woods every night, shining and shivering. Climbed the stairs to where Aunt Eve waited with her owl eyes and told stories till the old woman fell asleep. This is a story of the blue. Now came the bitter cold. This is a story. It was passed upon the apple time. There were no more pumpkins. All the corn had been picked. And one freezing night, after all the children had eaten too much pie, Lucretia woke from a terrible dream in which Gideon was bigger than the bed and had grown a large wax mustache and had fangs. She ran into Annabelle's room to tell her. Annabelle! Annabelle! Gideon grew giant! Gideon grew fangs! But Annabelle was not there. Where was Annabelle? Not in her bed, not in her room, and not downstairs in the pantry sneaking more pie. Lucretia woke up Horta. Annabelle is gone! Hortense jumped on her mother and father. Dressing gowns in and out, in and out the rooms of the chilly house. Upstairs, all we sat dreaming out the window. Nobody thought to go up. Annabelle! 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 White dressing gowns in the Atlas parlor. White dressing gowns, and the horse was running. Quiet. Tick. 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 When the grandmother clock. Then, and about the mother heard the wind bang and wanted to touch the in the house. She looked with the window at the moonlight streaming in. Put your coats on, she told the children. Put your mittens on. And out they went, out into the night, out into the dark, up the log and the wood. What did they see? What did they see? They see? Flying through the treetops. One night, 
Last week, night of the first frost, I was home by the fire, just going to head up to bed when I heard the horses moving about their stall. Auntie? Moving about, making strange noises, fright. Auntie? I took the lamp and went up, walked across the cold grass, and pitch black, walked almost to the woods before I saw her. Auntie? Something white slipping around the corner of the barn. I shone my lamp on. Quick as a wink, sh shone the light, and there she was. Pale as watered milk. Skin so white it was almost blue, almost green. Thin. Thin as a starving dog. I stared. I stared. Oh, wait. Two huge eyes. Silver discs stared back. <coughs> What do you want? I said. What have you come here for? She, she opened her mouth as if to speak. What do you want here? Again, she opened her mouth. What do you want? What do you want? And this time, she began to speak, began to utter. But what came out? Not words. Not words. Please, 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 please. please. What is real and what is not? Annabelle did not know anymore. Annabelle was sick. Annabelle was so sick that her father did not go to work. Her mother sat beside her bed and did not move. Lucretia and Hortense were quiet. Annabelle was so sick that dreams overtook her. She slept and woke and slept, but could not tell which was which. Sometimes deep in the middle of her dream waking, Annabelle thought she could hear Aunt Leaf call. But she was too weak to get up, and she was never left alone. For the first time, nobody wanted Annabelle to speak. Oh, how is Auntie? How is Aunt Leaf? Aunt Leaf? Aunt Leaf is old. Aunt Leaf is just the same. Aunt Leaf is fine. Well, did you ask? Did you ask her? But Annabelle knew they would still make pies and jams to pick up on the trays, change the sheets on Aunt Leaf's bed, make sure her clothes were clean and open the window to let in the fresh air. But they would not ask her to tell stories, nor would they tell her any stories of their own. What is real and what is not? Annabelle could not tell how long she had been asleep. She could not tell if it had been for an hour or a year. But one night she woke, found that her mother was no longer in her room next to her. She could hear her father safely snoring down the hall. Outside her black window it was snowing. What happened? She thought. Weren't there leaves? Weren't the woods filled with animals and birds? And didn't we spend all night telling stories? Auntie, I'll leave. But only the snow answered, softly brushing the window with its icy crystals. What has happened? I made it up. Aunt Leaf is just an old woman asleep upstairs. I was sick. And now I'm better, and I'm almost 12 years old. Far off, the sound of an axe rang faintly. I made everything up. And the axe rang louder. I made everything up. And the axe rang louder. And the axe rang louder. I made it up. I made it up. I made it up. Wilder and wilder, until at last she ran to the window and looked out once again. One last time in the night to see to see. Auntie? Aunt Lee! Annabelle stood in Aunt Lee's dark room. Did you know it was snowing? I, I went out in the snow. I went out because I heard. I heard, I heard I went out to see. I went out and I saw a man chopping trees. A man at the edge of the forest, cutting trees. Clearing the dead wood. I saw a man chopping trees. I saw his dog running in the snow. I saw the snow fall on his axe. I saw the light jumping off the blade. I saw the blade sink into the wood. I saw a man chopping trees. I saw his hand. I saw his eyes. I knew who he was. Uncle Greenley. Uncle! What? He paid no attention to me. He swung his axe and the blade struck. He swung his axe and the blade struck. And then it stopped. I saw him walk out of the woods. I saw him walk to the big tree. The tulip tree? I saw him touch the lowest branch. I saw him put his hand on its huge trunk. I saw him look at it. He looked at the tulip tree. 
And I was afraid. No. No, no, you can't have that one. You can't take it. No, that's ours. That's our tree. It's mine. You can't have it. It's mine. It's mine. One shot. And it fell. Quiet. Like a cloud falling. Light as a feather on the moon. It made no sound. This is real. He looked at me. I saw his eyes just like you showed me. Two deep green pool. Tiny and warm. Then he whistled for his dog. It jumped in the snow. And he walked back into the woods. But it was more. It was more than a story. It was real.
say hi to the actors. They like to say hi to you guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming.